It is July 17th, 2023, and you're watching The Code Report. The internet has a big problem. When you look at an image, how do you know if it's real? This image of the Pope tricked millions of grandmas worldwide. When you hear someone's voice, how do you know it's real? This is not my real voice. It's a professional clone from Eleven Labs. My biggest fear as a digital creator is that tools like this will be used to fully replicate my online swagger and make me irrelevant. It's already happening to people. Like I legit thought that Greta launched her own oil company recently. Hello, my name is Greta and welcome to my oil company. I love how it is pumped out of the ground. I'm a huge fan of oil and use it all the time, as you can see here in this documentary from Honeypot that borrowed my deepfake animatron to make it look like I'm not AI generated. Luckily though, there's a new coalition in town that includes friendly mega corporations like Adobe and Microsoft, who have stepped up to rescue us from these generative AI problems that they created. It's called the Coalition for Content Provenance and Authenticity, or C2PA. Not many people know about it yet, but it should be on every developer's radar, because it could change the internet as we know it. Basically, it's a spec or set of guidelines for both hardware and software providers that would attach metadata to every media file, like images, videos, audio, and so on, then use cryptography to digitally sign it, making every file tamper aware. The idea is to make it impossible to change a pixel without the provenance of those changes being recorded on the file itself, or to a manifest that is permanently attached to that file. The first record will happen on the camera where the photo is taken, then when you go to edit in Photoshop, another record will be logged and signed there. It's almost like every image will become an NFT. My minus the blockchain. You'll be able to click on this icon to inspect the provenance information to determine if that image was generated by AI, or determine if it comes from a trusted news source like BuzzFeed or Infowars. This technology is already here, and just last week the coalition was urging the US Senate to put laws on the books that would make this technology essential. And we propose Congress establish a new federal anti-impersonation right that would give artists a right to enforce against someone intentionally attempting to impersonate their style or likeness. That actually sounds great. As a creator, I don't want to be impersonated, and as an end user, I want to make sure that I'm consuming authentic content. And it would be very useful to companies like Valve, who have recently started banning games on Steam that are suspected of using AI-generated content that could potentially violate someone's copyright. And other top companies like Stability AI are fully on board. Images generated through our platform can be digitally stamped with metadata and watermarks. We welcome Adobe's leadership in driving the development of some of these open standards. And not surprisingly, the US Department of Defense is on board because they believe this technology can help surface bad actors, like Steven Seagal or anyone else creating horrible synthetic content. Sounds pretty awesome, and I love when big corporations team up with the government to keep me safe, but when looked at from another angle, this could be viewed as a mass surveillance apparatus. In the future, it may be impossible to change a pixel on the internet without leaving a digital footprint. Currently, the spec allows for anonymity, but it talks about how this technology could be used with digital IDs issued by the government that would make it far easier to figure out who's creating all these memes that are offensive to our dear leaders. When this technology is combined with a digital currency and social credit system, we could easily shut down the meme warriors' internet access and reduce their allowance of lab-grown meat to just 12 ounces per week. In addition, it would give the establishment a monopoly on disinformation. Hypothetically, they could create all the AI-generated content they want while making it look trustworthy. And the vast majority of people out there will believe whatever authorities tell them. Like if this image had a NASA provenance signature on it, almost everybody would believe that we went to Mars, even though it's not a real place you can go to. In 1981, the CIA director said, we'll know our disinformation program is complete when everything the American public believes is false. This has been The Code Report. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.